Okay, today I'm going to give you a uh, super method that appears to be very effective and the name of it is fast twitch repeated sprint ability sequencing method. So you're really just giving your fast twitch fibers more capacity and ability to repeat this sprint uh, and fast twitch movements. Now it doesn't have to be sprinting, it can be strength training movements, it can be anything explosive and powerful. Um, and uh, this method will uh, give you some various results. Now, basically, the fast twitch repeated sprint ability, that's what the RSA is, uh, sequencing model. Here's an example of what happened. Got some school aged, high school aged kids. They started their testing with electronic timers. And what transpired is the coach would uh, test them until they dropped off uh, at, I believe, a 5 or 7% drop off. And they roughly got about 6 to 8 reps. And these were actually fairly decently fast kids. Okay. Um, and the rest time was 2.5 minutes. Now, after taking these kids through this sequencing model, okay, and it's a combination of various methods, the results from the testing increased sprints uh, 12 to 16 before they dropped off, but all the sprints were faster than this one across the board. So this is a very specific method that can be laid into your training program as an as an addition, it's probably not the foundation, okay, obviously because there's some tissue issues that need to be addressed. This doesn't uh, train the tendons and ligaments uh, like, uh, let's say, a plyometric would. So, now you will not see these results in Olympic and world-class sprinters, okay? It's not going to happen. However, you may be able to train with a little more volume after this method has happened. Now, you would not use this method going up to a world championships or an Olympics in a world-class sprinter. They have to have time in regards to adapt to the tissue adaptations that have taken place in this method. So, I will show you how to use it in peaking in part two or three, but ultimately there has to be a gap between when this method is implemented and, and when you expect to see the optimal results and performance in regards to world-class athletes. High school kids, young kids, you will just get results. So this, this sequencing method will also be wrote about in advanced uh, publications that I have. The first one will be Triphasic 2 uh, Advanced Methods. This is another book on top of Triphasic estimated date this December. Triphasic uh, Training Super Methods book. The estimated publication date will be November this year of 2017. And then Triphasic Training 3, the GPP model. It will also show you how to integrate, which I'll also do today. Repeated Sprint Ability um, will be published somewhere around uh, March of 2018. So there are mainly two components to this advanced super method, uh, which are fast twitch fiber uh, training. And then when I say that, there's capacity and there's also a uh, hypertrophy concept to it. And what transpires with this is you have to put these things in the right order. Now the steps, I'm going to first explain these orders of how we do things or what the method is, and then we'll get in details of what the order is to get optimal results. So the first is the fast switch fiber capacity method, <clears throat> which basically can be implemented with a stepper device, stepper machine with bands and a weight vest. So let me give you an example of how this works. So what we have here is somebody completing this simple scenario. And what's going on is you're basically doing the stepper. Notice there's bands resisting on both sides with a waist belt. Then we have a 20 to 40 pound weight vest on the athlete. Now, the one thing you have to realize is that this athlete is driving their uh, feet through the ground, okay? 
they're using the ankle rocker methods and they are also squeezing their toe. These are in other videos. This is of quite importance to drive home the glute pattern firing method. So as the athlete's driving up, they're told to take one step every second to two seconds. The athlete will keep her heart rate in certain parameters that we'll, we will cover. But they are driving and stepping extremely hard and fast, trying to get the full extension and curling their toes into the stepper with each step which then causes the glute pattern to become dominant. One of the things you'll not want to happen is that they'll uh, pick their hips up when they step up at the leg. The hips swing a little bit when they're doing this. This is pure driving down the way that sports are being played in the way that uh, the body should respond. Now don't be afraid to let the knee go in front of the toe because that's actually how it happens in sports. I know some people probably haven't committed, you know, heart attacks right now, but yes, that's what happens in sports, probably every rep. So, we'll go back to the, this is the capacity building method of the fast twitch fibers. So then the next one, the key coaching points, obviously, we, as I talked about, fire the glutes, squeeze the big toe, drive hard down barefoot. Some of the videos that you will probably need to look at, and I will put this um, link to this presentation on the video, so just look in the, uh, the notes on YouTube. But some key factors involved in doing this exercise, you'll need to watch the triphasic uh, exercise manual ankle rocker. Uh, you can look at the glute testing pattern to see if your athletes don't have the right pattern. And then the glute firing pattern for sports specificity is a very important uh, video in that regards. So now the other, uh, this is where I, the two sources where I got the capacity from. Victor Seleniov, uh, a Russian, I probably butchered his name. Uh, but he's a Russian uh, biochemist who was involved in the sports training world. Published this concept in the theory in 1994. And it was also republished, uh, Training and Adaption to Sports. I believe the English version was published in 2001. So these are the two uh, resources that you can find this at. Now, what we have is basically the potentiation clusters. So to cause hypertrophy in your fast twitch fiber, you need to very, use a very specific method. And the method I found most optimal is the high velocity potentiation clusters. I will hyperlink in the presentation an article to an article um, for, uh, from my website. Now here's an example of a potentiation cluster. For those of you that know what French contrast is, I'll explain it in greater detail later, but this is just a series of basically single repetitions to keep the quality so high that you're only recruiting the fast twitch muscle fibers during the workout. Now let me click on this and here's an example of a cluster. So many of you know with a French contrast you would normally do this for three to four reps where this athlete's doing it one time instead of four. Then they're doing a basically a double hurl hop but you have the reactive, you only have one reactive rep right there. And then he's going over and he's, for this purpose, we're running, but he would normally walk, take plenty of, um, a nice slow walk. He's doing a single ASFM uh, squat jump, and then he's doing the accelerated band jump, where he'll do two to get in the right position after the first one and being very reactive. Now he walks right back, and then, like I said, this case he runs, and he will repeat the same sequence and he will do it four times. So he's getting one good high quality rep out of each of these. Sometimes in the squat you only need to do it once obviously. In the hurdle hop you need two hurdles basically to get that high quality rep. So this first one there wouldn't be reactive. The second one's nice and reactive to get that done. So again he's pulling himself into position. That's chapter six of triphasic training. Um, and then he's doing the accelerated band jumps okay so he's done two cycles of this he will do four total in season you could adjust that to three cycles um, this is a very excellent in season method to keep your athletes strong and fast okay and now actually 
once the athletes get accustomed to it, you can have three or four athletes rolling through this and never getting slowed down. So there's a lot of work that can get done with this method with multiple athletes in the room. So he just finished his third cycle. I would leave him do another fourth one, but we're gonna end that part of the video. So the other one that you can do is uh, French contrast. It's not quite uh, as effective in regards, it is effective, but the other potentiation clusters are more optimal. So here's an athlete going to in a full deep squat. This is the decathlete. Um, and then he goes over to the, from the back squat, does his hurdle hops. Then he's doing squat jumps, weighted. And he's being very reactive. We have different phases in triphasic, whether we're doing eccentric and concentric on the first primary exercise. And then he's doing the banded um, squat jumps. About a 205 pound athlete there. So you can see after you do, and I'll give you exactly what you need to do in regards to how long in the sequence in the second part of this. These basically, the French contrast method came from uh, obviously Giles Cometti, uh, Carmelo Bosco also, uh, and uh, Hank Krajinoff. I actually uh, came up with the potentiation clusters to just increase all these gentlemen's theories and concept to get a little bit better improvement. Um, Hank's a world-class coach. These are um, scientists, okay? But Hank is one of the most premier uh, track coaches in the world. And here's the link to the article for the uh, potentiation clusters. So here's basically what transpires in this fast twitch sequencing model. So you essentially have a six to nine weeks of, of total training. So first, remember, we... In block one, we do a, um, a uh, stepper for two to three weeks. Now, it is a fast twitch capacity building. And the theory behind that is, is we're going to build some capacity in the uh, muscle fiber. Does it put more mitochondria in it? Theoretically, yes. Um, then, once you build that capacity, you go to the fast twitch fiber hypertrophy because after about three weeks, you're not going to get many more results. So then when you have to switch over to the hypertrophy, so the theory would be that you're going to increase the hypertrophy of the fast twitch fibers, which then will allow to be able to put more capacity in the fibers. So theoretically, mitochondria, you may have more room to place more mitochondria in there. I'm not sure that's exactly it. I know there's enzymes involved. In, on a number of levels, but ultimately, whether it's the mitochondria or the pathways or various enzymes that are increased, you just get results. Maybe a scientist could prove it. Uh, I'm going, going on a little rant here, but I see all these scientists thinking uh, they always act like they're the smartest people in the room, but they don't really help coaches in many ways um, as much as they should. Why don't they prove the concepts that seem to be working, tell us why, and then maybe we can make it better? my rant's over. Block two is, remember, making uh, the muscle hypertrophy bigger. It's two to three weeks. And then you actually go back to the stepper to rebuild the capacity of the enlarged hypertrophy. Okay. Why does it work so well? This is just the correct sequencing. You can play with it many different ways, but this is optimal. I'm not saying only do it this way, but I'm saying this is optimal. You can deviate from it based upon your situation. Okay, um, now what transpires is, uh, I kind of covered some of this, but remember potentiation clusters and French contrast are used at this point in block two. Um, like I said, the cell uh, fibers are larger, able to put more mitochondria into the system. You can pause this to get the, uh, to get exactly what you want out of it. You can, this is part one. I'll put part two up here shortly. You can follow me on YouTube and Instagram, Twitter, and so forth.